the battery rebate has been really good, but there are a few things that I know you've seen are issues. What's the one thing you would change about the battery rebate in Australia? Yeah, so the battery rebate is amazing for consumers. It's such a such a good time to install batteries, and it's allowed everyone to install the solution that really benefits them the most. Um, what I see in the industry is there's a lot of missizing of batteries. Um, there's some solar companies that are trying to sell just the smaller size battery to make it as cheap as possible to get into the market. And then on the other end of the scale, it's people are trying to sell the larger size battery, utilize the rebate, install the cheapest product they can find. And what's happening is they're missizing those batteries, both too small, too big for consumers, and is, is wasting a lot of that rebate funds. And what that'll mean is a lot of others that want the battery rebate will miss out as a result. So an example of that is we're seeing people that bought a small solar system at the bottom of the market, they spent maybe $3,000 on their solar, and someone's selling them a battery that comes with a 18,720 subsidized rebate from the government. So that's- So they're getting about $19,000 from the government basically. Yeah, correct. The maximum yeah. rebate's 18,720 for a 50 kilowatt battery, okay. kilowatt hour. Um, for someone that only spent $3,000 on their solar system. Um, that system's never going to charge that battery to full capacity. And they're never going to use that battery as full capacity. Yeah. So you've got all this excess uh, battery capacity sitting there that has had the rebate stamped on it. And meanwhile, two to three other people could have benefited from this rebate program um, had that system been right sized. So the money's going to run out, basically. Yes, we're on track for the budget that's been allocated. So it's legislated till 2030, but the budget that has been allocated, um, we're on track within the first probably 10 to 12 months to hit that budget. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so they, they've had a lot more uptake than what they thought. Yeah, it's been hugely successful. And I'm not sure the modeling behind the uptake in the percentage of customers that were going solar beforehand to how many would add batteries, but we're seeing pretty close to 100% adoption of those who are installing new solar systems, adding a battery with it. As well as, we've got 4 million existing solar yeah. systems in Australia. Um, a lot of them are choosing to add batteries as well. So, you're really traditionally more of a solar company, but are you doing more solar installations right now or batteries? So we've been installing solar and batteries for the last 10 years. Yep, um, okay. But our rate of battery installations prior to the rebate was probably five, maybe up to 10% of customers installing okay. with a battery. Yep. And now we're at about 99%. There's still some use cases. 99%? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And there's still some use cases or reasons why a customer would install without batteries. Um, sometimes it's budget and affordability. Mm -hmm. Another example is I've got a builder that's uh, building a duplex that needs to put solar on for the green ticks. Yep. Yep. Um, and they also want to provide a base level system for their end customer. But rightfully, is they don't want to utilize the battery rebate, put a token sized battery, and then that. Uh, homeowner moves in and says, "I want a big battery and need a big battery, but they can't. Um, okay. They can't okay, get the rebate because okay, yeah. it's, it's a one and done rebate. So once you've claimed it, whether it's a ten kilowatt hour battery or a fifty kilowatt hour battery, you can't claim the rebate a second time." Yeah. What's yep. the feedback from customers then after installing the battery with the rebate? Yeah. What are they saying? What are they saying to you? Customers are absolutely stoked with the batteries. Okay. It is a huge win for homeowners. Um, we're seeing a, a little bit of battery size regret though with some homeowners. Oh yeah? And the reason being, I've, we've not come across any customers that say they um, wish they had bought a smaller battery. Is they've all, all the customers have voiced in us, it's, it's not that many, but uh, they've all said, I wish I had got a bigger battery. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Is they went conservative with the with their purchase and they go, oh, you know what, with the rebate that was being offered as well as the discount that you're yeah. providing on the batteries, I should have got a bigger battery. Okay. Are you able to add another 10 kilowatt hours on now? And unfortunately, the answer is not under the rebate. No, yeah, okay, you know, okay. Right sizing your solar system and right sizing your battery. And that's why you want to work with a team that uh, really customizes it into your needs, suggest the size that's right for you. Um, obviously, you can take that guidance or not. Yeah. Um, but there's complex scenarios there. There's some calculations and also within budgetary means as well.
battery prices have come down by about 93% in the last 10 years. The sell prices, anyway. Yep. I know you have other costs involved. Of course, insulation costs are, are not changing, probably getting higher. But the actual battery prices have come down enormously. Mm. How soon do you think until the grid is optional? You know, people just don't need to actually even connect to the grid. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, if you are currently grid connected, you should always stay grid connected, is my opinion. Uh, there might be some circumstances where you might disconnect afterwards. Um, we've got one customer that has a, effectively a very small feed from the grid. So they're looking at a large off-grid system and being able to permanently disconnect from that and be fully self-sufficient. But for someone in a stable grid area that has a good connection, it's a very small price to pay to maintain that connection so that you've always got energy um, availability in the longest of storms with very little solar production and very little charge of your batteries. Yeah. Um, right through to all technology has uh, has its moments. So if, if there is a warranty issue on your inverter, for example, or on your panels in the future, you're not without power until that gets to, uh, rectified. How big of a battery, if someone does want to go upgrade, how big of a battery do you think they need? If it's a household with two kids, two parents, and one EV, yep. what would you say? Yeah, good question. Generally, what you look at for sizing off-grid is you take the average daily power consumption and you times that by three. Okay. So it's a much bigger solution and a much bigger solar solution as well to be able to go completely off-grid compared to on-grid. And the reason being, you've got to allow for all scenarios, full usage of electricity within the home for an extended period with excess uh, rain and bad weather. Okay. So for the average family, that might be, say, 100 or 60 or what do you think? So, so we can also do a hybrid system for off-grid where you can minimise the amount of batteries, but you can add a generator as well. Okay. So that way, uh, if... Emergencies happen, the 1%. Yeah, correct. Yeah. So we've designed yeah. a lot of on-grid systems for customers in southeast Queensland, northern New South Wales, and yep. also our customers up in far north Queensland, where we have um, generator integration with their inverters. Okay. So what that means, if uh, you get a cyclone that... You've got bad weather front that comes in for three days beforehand, bad weather for three days after, is if you do fully deplete the batteries and there isn't enough sunshine to recharge them for your usage, switches over to the generator. Okay.